Hi again, and welcome to Lecture 3 in our Journey Through the Atmosphere. I'm Terrence Mullins, and this lecture is based off of pages 15 through 17 in our textbook. And let's jump in. So, up to this point, everything we've been talking about has been the structure, composition, and so on of the atmosphere. Now, with all that said, this class, although it's about the atmosphere, this class is mainly about weather. And that's something that always excites me because I've loved weather ever since I was a little kid. But what is weather? Well, now that we know a little bit about the atmosphere, we can talk about what weather actually is. So, brief definition, weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a given place and a given time. So, think about where you're at right now. Step outside for a second, and whatever the condition of the atmosphere is at your location and at that moment is weather. It's often referred to as the here and now of the atmosphere. And I'll throw that around a few times this quarter as well. But the here and now meaning at your location at that very moment. Now this is important because weather can vary greatly over a relatively small area. Um, don't believe me, if you live in the Bay Area, drive 30 minutes in any direction, and I guarantee you the weather will likely be very different. Um, if you drive up the peninsula towards the Bay, weather usually gets a little bit cooler during the summertime. If you drive up into the mountains, the weather changes. If you go down towards Gilroy in the middle of the summer, the weather gets really hot, and so on. Weather can vary greatly over a small area such as just this right here, um, the temperature in Cupertino and the temperature in San Jose might be two different, completely different things. Also, the cloud cover might be two completely different things. Or maybe it's raining in San Jose and it's not in Cupertino. So again, these conditions can vary pretty substantially over a relatively small area. Weather's also constantly changing. If you don't like the weather outside, just wait a few minutes. Um, sometimes it might change substantially, other times maybe not so much. But weather is constantly changing. The weather you're experiencing right now is different than what it was five minutes ago, and it's different than what it'll be five minutes from now. So weather is constantly changing. And so, with that said, when we talk about weather, we're talking about what's happening in our atmosphere at a given moment, at a given time. Changes from place to place, changes from minute to minute. Now, all of the weather that we'll talk about in this class is fueled by the sun. So things such as precipitation, things such as wind, all of these things start with energy from the sun. And we'll talk more about that in the next module. So as I just mentioned, weather varies from place to place. Um, what I have right here, this is something called the Wonder Map, which you can get from Weather Underground, um, a subsidiary of the Weather Channel. And what you can actually notice is temperatures do change over different locations. For example, here's De Anza College, right around here. The temperature on this map, which was taken in April of 2017, shows temperatures around 55, 56. If you go a little bit further into the San Jose area, temperatures jump up to 57, 58, even into the 60s over on the foothills of the Diablo Range over here. If you go into the Santa Cruz Mountains, temperatures drop substantially. So again, weather varies from place to place. Weather also varies from minute to minute. This is a graph showing how temperature, dew point, and relative humidity have changed over time at San Jose International Airport. And what you see is that temperature doesn't usually stay stable. Relative humidity usually doesn't stay stable. Dew point, which is, an which is an indication of the amount of water vapor in the air. 
doesn't usually stay stable. These things are constantly changing over time. Now, when we talk about weather, most people think we're just talking about temperature. And that's usually because when you open your weather apps or you watch a weather forecast, usually temperature is the big thing that everybody talks about. It's usually the first thing that's mentioned. And it's one of the biggest factors in human comfort. However, weather conditions, atmospheric conditions, vary with much more than just temperature. Other weather conditions include air pressure, cloud cover, precipitation, humidity, wind speed, wind direction, that's how fast the air is actually moving, visibility, and so on. And, and this is just a small taste. I mean, there's so many different conditions that we as meteorologists look at to determine what the weather is at a given location. Now, how do we do this? How do we measure all of these things? Well, what we do is we use what are called instruments and we put them on what are called platforms. And there are many different platforms that you can mount a weather instrument. For example, you could take an anemometer, which measures wind, and place it near the surface of the earth. Here you have something on a pole stuck into the ground, it's not going anywhere. That is a weather platform. Another weather platform, satellite. We have many satellites orbiting our planet right now as we speak, and each one of those satellites is actually looking down at our atmosphere and gathering weather conditions. Weather balloons are another platform. We take an instrument pack, tie it to a balloon, launch it into the atmosphere. Weather radar is another one we can take this one instrument and it can do a wide scan over a large area and determine where it's raining and where it's not raining. So these are a few very different platforms. Some of these platforms such as a satellite or a weather balloon are moving. Also a portable instrument attached to a moving vehicle. Others such as the planet anemometer or the thermometer that you have on the outside of your house or this radar. These are stationary. These stay put. But as you can see, we have many different platforms that we can use to diagnose what current weather conditions are. So here are some of the instruments. This one here on the left is what's called an anemometer. It can measure both wind direction and wind speed. This guy up here, this is what's called a temperature sensor, a thermometer. We'll talk more about why it looks the way it does in about a week or two. And then this right down here, this is a rain gauge. And these are just a few ground instruments. Then we have satellites. And satellites can actually tell us a lot about the atmosphere, such as the presence of clouds, the presence of water vapor. And these things can actually tell us where storm systems are, where they're approaching, how um, intense they might be, what to expect from them. And in fact, once we started putting satellites into space um, roughly about 50 years ago, we've actually been able to learn a lot more about our planet's atmosphere. And so satellites don't just give us clouds, they give us all kinds of other things. Um, but we'll talk more about clouds in a few weeks. Doppler radar. This is an instrument that is planted in one location. So let's say it's planted here over Marion County. And what it actually does is it sends out a beam of radiation of radio waves that actually go out and they bounce off of things and return to it. So the platform itself stays stationary, but it sends out these beams of radiation that then come back and based on when they return, how they return, we can learn a lot about 
what kind of rainfall there is, how heavy it might be, and so on. Weather balloons are also a very important thing. We can use weather balloons to get an idea of how conditions vary in the upper atmosphere. And this is important because this can tell us a lot about the stability of the atmosphere, which we'll talk about in a couple of weeks. And the stability makes a pretty big difference. So here are two gentlemen, uh, yours truly right here, and then a really cool guy by the name of Jeff Forgeron over here, who's actually an on-air meteorologist now. Um, and we have a weather balloon. And tied to the bottom of this weather balloon is an instrument pack called a radio sonde. This radio sonde can measure many different things, such as air temperature, dew point temperature, wind direction. It uses the GPS to calculate wind speed. And it can give us a lot of really crucial information about what's happening in the atmosphere. And then there are portable weather instruments. Um, some are handheld, such as the Kestrel. Others are so large that you need to attach them to a moving vehicle. Like this right here called the Doppler on wheels. They actually use this for chasing tornadoes. Now, once we gather all of this data, we then display it on what are called weather maps. And these weather maps can allow us to view weather conditions over a large area. Part of your module one activity is going to be to look at a few weather maps. But these weather maps are useful because they can help us track large scale weather patterns, storm systems, fronts, hurricanes, and so on. And they're useful because they allow us to make predictions of future weather events. These weather maps can display many different variables such as temperature or rainfall or so on. Many of them may only display one variable such as, such as rainfall or such as the presence of clouds or such as temperature or air pressure. Others can contain numerous variables. And we have really good use of all many different kinds of weather maps. Here's an example of a weather map. This weather map shows you air temperature over the continental United States. And looking at this weather map, you can identify where the warmest areas are, um, the desert southwest, southern Texas, the deep south, and Florida looks like it's the hottest. And you can also identify the colder regions of the United States, such as Chicago, Milwaukee, over here in the Midwest, and then up here in Upper Maine, near the um, American-Canadian border. So we can identify where temperatures are warm, where they're cold, and that actually helps us identify key weather patterns, such as right here in Illinois, Eastern Illinois is experiencing temperatures in the high mid to high 70s. Meanwhile, in Western Illinois, temperatures are in the mid 50s. That's a stark temperature difference and that actually might be due to the presence of some kind of storm system. So even just looking at a temperature map we can see a lot of things. Here's another map showing you what are called isobars, lines of constant pressure, also high and low pressure systems, different fronts, and then these green shadings here represent the presence of precipitation. Now, all of this varies. So everything we've talked about now is what's called weather. However, there's another word that meteorologists often see used interchangeably, and that's called climate. Climate and weather are actually two very different things. While weather is the condition of the atmosphere at a given location, and at a given moment, climate is not the same thing. Rather, climate is the average weather of a given region. What this means is we look at weather conditions for a given location, and we look at what's typical of that location. 
The way we figure out what's typical is by calculating what are called averages. Basically, we look over a 30-year period for a given date, and we calculate the average temperature using that 30-year period, and that tells us a lot about that location's climate. Weather deals with the instantaneous condition, climate deals with the average condition. So while weather can change from moment to moment and from place to place, climate changes are much, much, much more gradual. One other thing about climate, though, is a location's climate also takes extremes into account. For example, if you live in Death Valley, Death Valley, California, you know that it can get pretty hot there in the summertime. That's taken into account in Death Valley's climate. Or if you live in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma City is an area that commonly has tornadoes. And so that's considered a part of Oklahoma City's climate. Whereas here in California, we are used to relatively mild summers, mild winters, not major changes in temperature. We don't get tornadoes. We rarely get thunderstorms. It doesn't rain in the summer. It does rain in the winter. Those are things that define a region's climate. What kind of weather is typical for that region? What kind of temperatures are typical for that region? And then what kind of extreme weather events are typical for that region? Um, and by the way, a lot of people, when they talk about climate in California, they say, oh, well, California's climate involves earthquakes. Well, actually, not quite. Earthquakes aren't an atmospheric phenomenon. Therefore, they have nothing to do with weather. Um, I know. So, for example, tornadoes are common in Texas, not in California. Um, and the occurrence of these extreme events can help distinguish between two otherwise similar climates. For example, if you live somewhere hot and humid, but you don't get hurricanes, you might be different from another region where it's hot and humid and they do get hurricanes. Just some key comparisons between weather and climate. Weather represents short-term conditions. Climate represents averages, what's typical. Weather's what you get. Climate's what you expect. Weather changes very quickly. Climate changes very gradually. Weather can vary greatly from place to place. Climate's a much more regional thing. It's a much more regional variation. So it varies over a larger area. Um, for example, um, the weather here in Cupertino, where I'm recording this video, and the weather in downtown San Jose are very different from one to the other um, in, in a given moment. The weather here in Cupertino right now is likely different than what it is in downtown San Jose. However, if you actually looked at the average climate, the two are almost identical. And so climate varies over time, but over much longer time periods and over much larger areas. A few examples of weather. So if I say currently it's 72 in Cupertino, that is an example of weather. Or currently it's snowing outside, that's an example of weather. On the other hand, examples of climate, if I were to say, Normally, it's 85 outside. Or it's hot in the summer, cold in the winter. Or it doesn't rain in the summer months here. Those are explanations, expressions of the region's climate. Now, that wraps up pretty much our introduction module on the atmosphere, weather versus climate, and so on. Um, but just a quick review. Weather is the state of the atmosphere at a given time and a given place. We measure weather conditions using instruments on different platforms. And we plot that data on weather maps. Climate, on the other hand, average state of the atmosphere over a much larger region. Climate changes occur over a much larger time span and over a much larger area. So weather changes are more instantaneous, climate changes 
are much more gradual. So that's it for this lecture, and that's it for this module. Um, please feel free to go back and review any of the other videos. Feel free to watch them as many times as you want. Stop and pause, take notes, and good luck on the first quiz. Um, I'm Terrence Mullins. Thank you again for watching, and I'll talk to you next time when we start talking about heat.